Well, hello again. Today it's Tuesday. It's the 22nd of October, and uh, a couple of days after the big global uh, global disclosure day. Oh, what a debacle! What a debacle that was. I wasted a couple of hours of my life looking at that, and as I predicted. You know, absolutely nothing ET related was disclosed that was backed up with any kind of tangible evidence. Awful lot of science fiction rubbish, as you might expect. But that is the ET piffle peddlers' core business. Okay, so, oh, hang on, let's just set the timer. I don't want this to go more than 30 minutes. Now, I'll try and squeak all this in. I've got quite a few notes here. I might have to uh, do this in two parts, so I hope you'll bear with me, if that's the case. Now, uh, Global Disclosure Day. It's actually a three hours, three hour, 12 minute video. I couldn't push myself much beyond the two hours. I, I got past the MUFON guy, and then it went to contact in the desert, and I thought, no, it's just getting worse and worse. It's uh, just getting further and further from reality. So, the New Paradigm Institute uh, intro was by Jim Garrison. Now, I'd never heard of this guy before, but uh, apparently he's been around in the business, and that's what it is, of course, uh, with uh, Danny Sheehan for a very long time. Um, his intro could have been lifted uh, from a science fiction film. Very dramatic. Uh, he told us... Uh, the US government had mandated all information on non-human intelligence had to be submitted by the 20th of October 2024. Now this was signed off in the, uh, the NDAA 2023 by Joe Biden that anything relating to non-human intelligence, you know, ET technology and all that sort of stuff had to be submitted to the, uh, the US National Archive by the 20th of October this year, which was Sunday, which is one Global Disclosure Day, validate Roswell. <laughs> and he said that the fact that it was written into the NDAA confirms that it's true, that there is non-human biology and technology here on Earth to be submitted. And of course, that's not what it means at all. It doesn't validate it at all, because what it actually said was any, any information and <laughs> techn technology relating to non-human intelligence, <clears throat> biology or technology should be submitted to the US National Archive by the 20th of October 2024, should it exist. And he conveniently left out the last part, should it exist. So it doesn't validate it at all. It's just another fanboy, you know. Um, so of course, having it written in there does not confirm that it exists. When it states clearly in the document, should it exist, okay? Okay, so uh, Jim Garrison waffled on for a bit and he does in between the different presenters. But the bottom line is, Jim Garrison offered no tangible evidence of ET visitation to the Earth. No tangible evidence offered by Jim Garrison. Okay. So then we had Sarah Nelson was the uh, the first presenter. Um, now I watched this yesterday, maybe the day before. My note says a lot of meaningless twaddle. Sarah offered no tangible evidence of ET visiting the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, then we got our old favourite, Lou Elizondo. So, you know, he's the director of ATIP, the hobby programme that he invented that had no, no funding from the government whatsoever, who went from, oh, yeah, mm, well, I, well, well, we may, you know, they're, they're, we may not be alone, uh, looking at the sky left and right, looking at his shoes, to, oh, we're definitely not alone because his, his book's out now, you know, he's got to sell the book. Um, you know, he, he quit his job at the Pentagon to be a civilian researcher, makes no sense whatsoever. 
if you're in a government position and, you, and you've got access to government information relating to UFOs or UAPs, not that that means they're ET, why would you give that up to be a civilian and have no access to any of that whatsoever? No access to the technology for tracking any of this stuff, you know. So Lou Elizondo's story makes zero sense. Of course, Lou Elizondo's got a book to pedal. Um, he offers no tangible evidence for E.T. visiting the Earth. So Lou Elizondo offers zero tangible evidence for E.T.'s visiting the Earth. Well, then we have our old mate Ross Coulthard. Now, the investigative journalist who tells us he knows exactly where a huge crashed E.T. craft is. It's outside of the U.S. It was so big they had to put a building over it. <laughs> He won't tell us where it is, though. <laughs> Investigative journalism at its best, eh, Mr. Coulthard? Uh, <laughs> and he hasn't, of course, told us the results of the tests of his alien ball from Texas, you know. The ball that was unbelievably heavy, weighed 50 pounds. Unbelievably heavy would be 50 tonnes. And he thinks that uh, ETs are flying around the galaxy and they're engineering artefacts using terrestrial imperial weights and measures. It weighed exactly 50 pounds. And of course he hasn't told us the results of his analysis of this ball because it's a plain old bull check valve made in the USA. That's why we haven't heard anything about it. You know, if it was ET <laughs> related, we would have known about it a long time ago. And of course, uh, Ross Coulthard offered no tangible evidence for ET visiting this planet. Uh, yeah, Coulthard suggests citizen activism to push for disclosure. And this is pretty much what I said would happen. You know, disclosure day would come and go. They'd have nothing to disclose, so they'd have to push for disclosure. Because they can't, they can never agree that there's nothing to disclose. Because then they won't get any talking fees, they won't get any TV programmes, book sales, DVD sales. Yeah, all this sort of stuff, you know, television programs, it all it evaporates. As soon as they say, we believe, Arrow, that uh, they've looked into every project, every compartment, and there is nothing ET related in any of them. So Coulthard has to say, okay, we've got to push for disclosure. You know, they're keeping it a secret. They are really, honestly, you know, we can't prove that. There's no tangible evidence to support that, but they're keeping it a secret. ET's coming here. Take my word for it. Buy my books. Um, yeah, I mean, the piffle peddlers have to try and keep this alive because it's their livelihood. They're making a very good living out of it. And uh, that's all there is to it. There is nothing to disclose. You know, if there was, <clears throat> any academic would trample his mother to death if she stood between him and a Nobel Prize. If any of the academic, any academics are working on reverse engineering alien spacecraft, we would know about it. Someone would have their Nobel Prize. It's all science fiction bullshit. Now, uh, old Coulthard also said we're shooting down ET craft with high power microwave weapons. This, of course, is complete and utter rubbish. Extraterrestrials, if they can get here from another part of the galaxy, are going to know all about microwaves and what can and can't be done with microwaves. The other thing too is that um, these piffle peddlers are always telling us that these extraterrestrial spacecraft have performance characteristics that defy the laws of physics. They go from zero to supersonic speeds, they go from 80,000 feet to sea level in the blink of an eye and all this sort of stuff. And in the next breath they tell us that they're shooting with that they're shooting them down with high energy microwave pulse weapons. You can't do it both ways, can you? you know, either they've got fantastic technology that defy, defies the laws of physics, or we can shoot them down. You can't have both, can you? So, <laughs> of course, if ET craft were coming here, um, they're their detection and avoidance systems would be such that we would not be able to shoot them down. It's as simple as that. This is bullshit, absolute rubbish. 
we are not shooting down extraterrestrial spacecraft with high power microwave pulse weapons or anything else. A claim like that is going to have to be backed up with tangible evidence. I want to see parts, dead bodies, tangible evidence, peer reviewed by several, <coughs> several recognised independent universities all say yeah this is extraterrestrial biological material this is extraterrestrial technical material not someone saying oh take my word for it we're shooting them down with pulse weapons you know microwave pulse weapons it's nonsense who they must think that people are as dumb as a box of hammers to believe this bloody rubbish so there's the there's the there's not a scrap of tangible evidence to support even one alien spacecraft crashing on this planet. Let alone being recovered and reverse engineered, you know. Next we have Carl Nell, <laughs> who says there's no doubt, you know, we're interacting with extraterrestrials. Non-human intelligence not only exists, um, but uh, we are interacting with them and have been interacting with them uh, with humanity. You know, ETs have been interacting with humanity. These NHIs, these non-human intelligences, uh, are interacting with humanity today. This continues. They have been interacting and they are interacting. Interaction is ongoing. <laughs> <clears throat> he wants to know how he can convince people that this is the case. <laughs> well, good luck with that one, Mr. Nell. The only way you could convince me is by doing what I just said previously, you know. Show me some tangible evidence that's been peer-reviewed by several respected independent universities. Now, when I, when I see those reports and they tell me that it's extraterrestrial material, and they all concur, and they're real universities, uh, then, I, then I'll accept that's what's happening. That's the only way you're going to convince me. You're not going to convince me by saying, oh, this guy says it's real, this guy says it's real. You know, Lord Hill Norton says it's real. You know, he was re referring to Lord Hill Norton talking about the Rendlesham incident, I think it was. You know. But Hill Norton wasn't there. He, he was just saying he believes the story. That doesn't mean it's true. You know, you need evidence. So that, Mr. Nell, is how you would convince people. Show them some tangible evidence and stop all the science fiction stories. Stop all the science fiction bullshit. Put up or shut up. Put up or S-T-F-U. And that goes for all of them, not just Nell. So... You know, it, and he says, oh, uh, this is Nell again. He says, oh, we know, we know ETs are out there you know, because of the amount of stars. And, you know. Well, we don't. We don't know they're out there. We can have a belief that they're out there because logic would dictate that, you know, the galaxy's not going to be, we're not going to be the only life in the galaxy. That makes sense. But we don't know that as fact. We don't know as fact that we are not the only life in the galaxy, in the universe. That is fact. We don't know they're out there. You know, these, these people really do push the piffle peddling envelope, the edge of the piffle peddling envelope, don't they? They really push it. Um, so we don't know they're out there. Um, personally, I think they probably are. Um, I don't think they're coming here though, I think the distances are just too great. Um, and he tells us that far faster than light travel is possible. Science fiction twaddle, you know, that has not been proven. There's a few theories out there. How you can bend space and warp space using an energy no one knows how to make, and so much of it that you'd probably crush the planet as soon as you turn it on. But... <laughs> <laughs> people have people have thrown these theories around but none of it is fact we do not know that light speed you can travel faster than light it's rubbish 
Um, yeah. So, so all Nell does is give us a list of names and tell us that science fiction rubbish like, you know, faster than light speed is attainable and um, we know the ETs are out there, which is twaddle. Um, apparently lots of, uh, lots of people believe UAPs are real, or he believes UAPs are real, yeah. UAP does not equal alien spacecraft. How many times do we have to say that, you know? UAPs are real. You know, see something flying in the sky, don't know what it is. It's an identified flying object. Doesn't mean it's an alien spacecraft. To, to, to go from that to it's an alien spacecraft is a major leap that will require tangible evidence. Here's a sample of the thing that crashed in the field over there. It's been analysed by half a dozen respected universities. They all say it's extraterrestrial material. And of course an alien spacecraft, I've said it before, it's not going to be metal, you know. It's going to be made of all sorts of <coughs> super exotic, low mass synthetic materials that we can't even imagine. You know, you're not going to find aluminium sheets and titanium sheets and rivets. It's ridiculous. Now, uh, he also mentions Trump. Several names, you know, believe in UAPs. And he mentions Trump. Now, I saw Trump in an interview where, some, where someone asked him about um, aliens. And Trump actually said that he does not believe in aliens personally. That's what Trump said. It's in a TV interview. I can probably find the clip if you really want to see it. In fact, I'll probably, I've probably done a video about it showing you that already. So, bottom line, Carl Nell offers no tangible evidence for ETs visiting Earth. Then we have Senator Tim Burchett, Burchett, sorry. Burchett believes ET is here because Grush and co have told him and that's good enough for him. It's not, Senator Burchett, it really isn't. You need tangible evidence. He's uh, part of some sort of caucus, they want to get another congressional hearing going. Unless he subpoenas, forget all these people that are going to come forward with these science fiction stories. You know, if they haven't got tangible evidence to back it up, put a line through them, move on. Don't waste your time on them. You need to subpoena Hal Pulloff and Eric Davis. Get them in there and say, this is going on, take us and show us where. Show us these materials. Show us these alien bodies. Those two are at the root of all of this E.T. is here bullshit. So, Senator Tim Burchett, Burchett, offers no tangible evidence for E.T.'s visiting the Earth. So, so far, their, their presenters are not doing very well, are they? Well, we haven't had one, one single presenter that's offered any tangible evidence for E.T.'s visiting the Earth. This is the Global Disclosure Day on the New Paradigm Institute uh, website. Uh, so Burchett wants another bipartisan, he, he's part of a bipartisan UAP caucus. He wants another hearing soon. As I said, unless they, unless they subpoena help put off an Eric Davis, they're wasting their time. Next was Kevin Wright. Now I haven't heard of most of these people, of the new, Paradigm Institute, who tells us nothing was submitted to the US National Archives by October the 20th. Remember anything uh, ET related, UAP ET related materials, data was supposed to be uh, submitted to the US National Archive by October the 20th this year. It was written into the NDAA uh, 2023, signed off by Joe Biden. Um, weather's warming up, so you're getting a fly or two around. Um, so, so nothing was submitted to the US National Archive by October the 20th. <laughs> that was another prediction of mine, wasn't it? I said nothing ET related will be submitted because there's nothing ET related here on Earth. There is no ET technological or biological material on this planet to be submitted. Okay, so now apparently that date has been bumped. So that it was the uh, 
The 20th of October 2024, all this stuff had to be submitted to the US National Archive, all this stuff relating to all this ET, UFO stuff, you know. They're all expecting Roswell to be validated because everything over 20 years, classified or not, was going to be released to the public. Now they've bumped it to uh, September the 30th, 2025. They've bumped it another 11 months. So now any and all materials <laughs> relating to ET being here on Earth. <clears throat> UAPs in there as well, I don't think it should be because that clouds the issue. As I've said, UAPs, UFOs are real, doesn't mean they're ET. You should concentrate on ET. Forget UAPs, forget UFOs. So, so uh, and I'll make another bold prediction. I was right this time, nothing, was, nothing ET related would be submitted to the US National Archive by the 20th of October 2024. Oh, right again. Well, there you go. And nothing ET related is going to be submitted to the US National Archive by the 30th of September 2025. Because there is no ET material here. So, uh, the rest of Mr. Wright's presentation was just fluff, really meaningless. Kevin Wright offered no tangible evidence of E.T. visiting Earth. Another, one. Another presenter bites the dust. This is Global Disclosure Day on the New Paradigm Institute website. Not doing very well, are they? Not one presenter so far has been able to disclose anything E.T. related, supported with tangible evidence. Then we have Danny Sheehan. Now, Danny Sheehan, as we know, is prone to a yarn or two Deep dark basements looking at photos of alien spacecraft sticking out in the ground at 45 degrees, you know, after impacting <laughs> at 1200 miles an hour. <laughs> and he says, uh, UAPs are crude alien spacecraft from other planets in this galaxy. He tells us there are many alien bases here on Earth, up in the mountains. <laughs> High in the mountains. <laughs> and beneath the sea. This, of course, is science fiction nonsense. Danny Sheehan offered no tangible evidence to support E.T. visiting Earth. He supported no tangible evidence to support his fanciful claims of E.T. coming here, crashing here, alien bases, high in the mountains, or under the sea. Danny Sheehan. Zero tangible evidence presented. But another one bites the dust. What's the, what, what are these guys actually disclosing? They, they're disclosing that they know nothing. Then we have Don Schmidt. Now, I thought this was quite amusing because uh, he teaches the Roswell course at the Ubiquity University. <laughs> and he talks about the reality of the, uh, the ET spacecraft crash in July 1947. <laughs> when the Roswell wreckage was found by rancher Mac Brazel on his, on, on his ranch that he managed on the 14th of June, three weeks prior to July the 7th. So already he's off to a bad start, is, is Don Schmidt, isn't he? He, he? he teaches a course about the Roswell incident and doesn't even know when it took place. He continues with a few minutes of science fiction rubbish. Uh, not worth commenting on. So Don Schmidt offers no tangible evidence for ETs visiting the Earth. Another one bites the dust. Don Schmidt. What on earth? <laughs> no pun intended. Is he teaching on his Roswell course if he doesn't even know what date the crash occurred? He's going to be telling them, oh, there's a big electric storm, you know, big explosion on July the 7th, and it's all bullshit. The wreckage had been in Mac Brazel's field for three weeks by then. He found it on June the 14th. Don Schmidt, 
science fiction piffle peddler. Still, as, as long as you can repeat your science fiction piffle back to him, pretty much verbatim, you'll probably get your uh, certificate or your masters or your bachelors or whatever it is he's teaching. Should be a law against it, really, shouldn't it? Teaching absolute bullshit as fact. Don Schmidt offers no tangible evidence for ETs visiting the Earth. Next is Beatriz Villarol. I think I've got that pronunciation correct. Beatrice says we should look for evidence. Well done, Beatrice. That's, can't argue with that. Um, she presents a couple of photographs that appear to show light reflecting of something above the Earth before Sputnik was launched, and thinks this is curious. And, well, yeah, fair enough. What she doesn't take into account, or what she certainly doesn't mention, is that, of course, the Russians wouldn't launch Sputnik and it works first time. They would have had other launches previous to Sputnik that probably left debris in orbit. Um, also, the the US shot a uh, captured V2 into space in 1949, and the Nazis shot a V2 into space. It was the first human-made object ever to reach space in 1944. So humans were shooting stuff into space well before Sputnik. Uh, she wants to set up groups with optical telescopes. Now, I think this is pushing credibility a bit. I mean, she'll be able to set up the groups with optical telescopes. But, you know, and they want to look for astronomical anomalies. I want to see if there's anything in orbit or near the planet, you know, that shouldn't be there. But, I mean, with 6,000 Starlink satellites, US GPS satellite constellations, and there's quite a lot of satellites in those. There's Russian GPS satellite constellations, amateur radio satellites, goodness knows how many Earth observation satellites. Uh, yeah, I think she's probably wasting her time, to be honest. Doesn't hurt to look, uh, but yeah, I think that's going to be a waste of time, personally. Uh, Beatrice Villeneuve offers no tangible evidence for ETs visiting the Earth. Another one bites the dust. Then we have Kathleen Marden, who has researched ET experiences. She may think she has personally. I don't think anyone's interacting with ETs. You never see an, e you never see an ET experiencer with their favourite ET in a selfie, you know, with a thumb up. You know, the ET looking over the shoulder with a thumb up. Never see that, do you? No one has ever shown a selfie of themselves with their favourite ET mates. No one's, no one's interacting with ETs. Unless there's tangible evidence to support what they're saying. And I've never ever seen any, as far as I know. None has ever been presented. If there had been, someone somewhere would have a Nobel Prize. So Kathleen Marden offers no tangible evidence of ETs visiting the Earth. Another one down. Um, <clears throat> how are we doing for time? I'm going to stop this one here, so stay tuned for part two.